limitation that can also cause limitation. Of doors closing before you, oh, before wow. you enter. That's yeah. a sign. Yeah. You can also you can wrong. Your motives wrong. Inspired, informing nations, supporting people in real, effective deliverance. Hello and welcome again to the DRM Inspired Talk Show. I'm your host, Prophet Derek Mason, and this is part two of Limitations. Today I am here again, and really and truly we haven't left this place, but you know we do it. We do it in parts and segments. I'm here again with... Dr. Rachel Wise Mason, my wife, and Deliverance Minister Keon James. We are going to continue our topic on limitations. So, guys, welcome again, part two. Let's go. Amen. All right. Yeah, so, now. we are starting off with scriptural references of limitations. We have been talking about limitations and what causes limitation, what is behind limitation. We saw where demons are behind limitation because they come to steal, kill and destroy because God has called us to live an abundant life, give us an abundant life, etc. One can be encaged, you know, and be going from place to place like the analogy that we draw with the food in the cage, being fed and these things, but not recognizing that they are in limitation. Yes. Now, we're going to start over some scriptural references on persons who would have been under limitation and what does the Bible say as concerning limitations. Kian, Rachel, anybody? <laughs> from um, so, I can think of um, two examples with persons who had wealth but still felt limited because they can start their family and have children. That's correct. And that's Abraham and Sarah, correct. Um, who have wealth, yes. um, but did have their own promise even in order to bring forth to yes. carry on the wealth. Yes. And then um, the Shumamite woman who uh, who built a room for Elisha, and um, she obviously she had she had connections with the king. And Elijah had to ask her, you know, what can I bless you with? And she said, I have wealth, I have everything. And then the Israeli child had came up. And she got blessed with a child. Any yeah. other examples? At least those are what I think of with wealth and then still have that limitation. Yeah. Another um, example I'd like to say is that in the book of Exodus, uh, you will see that the, ch the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor oh and they God. made their lives bitter yeah. with hard bondage and by just simply reading that you can feel the restriction you can feel the limitations uh -huh. by just what pharaoh caused the egyptians to do with the children of israel and of course he in that case will represent the enemy because he delivered them unto taskmasters and said, fulfill your works. I've seen somebody watching this video you know, and saying, there's someone just like the place where you work in. Look how long we're working for this kind of salary. Yes. And then mommy doing all kind of work. Yes. And then self promoting man. And then Christian people do And then make me permanent here. Um, there, you remember there was this joke going on with a, a particular presenter who ended up in quarantine and this particular presenter would, uh, would say what are we really doing here boy, what are we really doing? Yeah. And that was the, 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 the top headliner was what I say every time I see my paycheck. What are we really doing here boy, what is I really doing here every time you look at your paycheck? You know, um, so there's some people like that is so good that you know you're working and you're still feeling like it's such bondage because you're still not getting the potential of what you know that you're supposed to achieve. And the Bible have a lot of examples of persons with financial limitations 
Um, Joke was an excellent example of one who had all and lost all, yeah, yeah. and then God blessed again. Um, the Bible also gives an example of the widow who um, she had the issue where um, her husband had died and they were going to take her children to become slaves. And she had admonished the prophet to try to help her because her husband was a man who had a, was faithful and a prophet that was after the heart of God. And the prophet had told her to get some oil jars. You know, because she had serious financial limitation at that time. To get some oil jars and try to, and then with the oil jars that she borrowed, the oil flowed. Um, there was also the limitation with Elijah when he had, um, when there was a famine upon the land and he met the widow, the widow, sorry, um, he met the widow who uh, was going to eat her last bit of flour and just died. Um, but she had still entertained Elijah, Elijah sorry, and, uh, and with that, um, she was able to get her breakthrough. Um, Naaman is the classic in my mind when I think about limitation because Naaman obviously had rank, Naaman had money. Naaman came to impress the prophet with his caravans and money and what he had to offer. And, but Naaman didn't have help. Naaman had leprosy. And that was a debilitating disease at the time that even in Israel, you couldn't mingle with regular persons. It was contagious. So when you had leprosy, you had to actually make a declaration when persons are wrong. you unclean, unclean. So, and, and that leprosy also brought restrictions in the relationships because no persons can be around you. And Naaman had all this wealth, but still had limitation with his health. When, 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 when one, um, when one is thinking of limitation, um, we can, we, we, we can also see that God is responsible for limiting how far man should go um, as pertaining to his ultimate divine purpose, right? Because these thoughts now came to mind when God said this far, that's the limit of how far you can go. Mm. So not all form of limitations is from the enemy, the enemy or it is still as bondage. This is what God divinely requires to bring about his wilderness, right? Um, and this is where you as a child of God come in, you have to know when it's time to give up that thing. Yes. When it's time, because you will be limited if you don't stop short at what, where God yes. says stop, yes. right? Because that's, that's how far you can go. I was thinking, as Rachel was talking there, I, um, I was thinking of Nebuchadnezzar. He could have only reigned as far as he reigned. Uh, and could not have gone through it because God had already determined that the next empire to come after him is the Medes and the Persians. Yeah. And also the Medes and Persians, they could not go through that because God determined that yeah. the Grecian empire, they would come and so on and so on. Yeah. And God who designs our destiny, Amen. he sets boundaries. Yeah. He sets limitations, yeah. but it's not limitations that do us harm, per se. It's on the glory. That's right, it's for his honor and for his glory. But the limitation that the enemy brings is always to disconnect us and to set us back from having that relationship that we should have with God, yeah. which we set the foundation of in part one yes. of our talk. Yeah. Right? So we are dealing with scriptural references of how persons are limited by the enemy that is okay. so there's a difference yes by the enemy and also from fulfilling God's divine purpose from getting from point A yes. to point B. You stop at point A and a half. B plus is not an eight. I, I say not eight. A eight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. B plus is not an eight. You stop short of an eight. You understand? Anytime you stop short, 
of the destination that God has for you. Yes. Right? It means that the enemy is in yeah. somewhere because God set us from and God set that limitation and He set that boundary. Yeah. Right? If He set it here, that is where He set it. If He set it there and it stopped here, somebody had this one. So either you are disobedient yeah. or the enemy burden, then the two and you just didn't know. Yeah. Right? So any further scriptural. Oh, oh yes. I think I yeah. like the reference that you had made with um you had just given the example of Nebuchadnezzar. Because mm -hmm. he was king. Yeah. He obviously yes. had wealth, but he didn't have mental health too. So he but couldn't mad. even he couldn't even enjoy being king. He was like a, a common madman because he had that limitation with his mind. Um, so the Bible speaks a lot about lim about limitation and they also identify some causes for it. Um, for example, like not walking in a line like to go. Um, in Deuteronomy 28, it said, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a glad heart for the abundance of all things, therefore you shall serve your enemies who God will send against you in hunger in thirst, in nakedness, and in the lack of all things. And he will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. So when we don't prioritize God, as we should, scripture says that is brings on a form of limitation. The Bible also says if you oppress others, and if you, you show unkindness to others, uh, that you will also experience that as perverse, 22, 16 said, he who oppresses the poor to make more for himself, who gives to the rich will only come to poverty. So who oppresses the poor to make more for himself will come to poverty. The Bible also speaks about thoughtfulness. And I hear your mother's voice when I hear this. Proverbs 6, 10 to 11. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little slumber. A little falling of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. Yeah. So um, the Bible also talks about if you're working, but you're not working smart or working with guidance. So you're not working with wisdom or seeking the Lord. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 10.4 says, Poor is he who works with a negligent hand. So you're working with a negligent hand. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. Um, Proverbs 20, Proverbs 28, 19. He who tills his land will have plenty of food. But he who follows empty pursuits will live in poverty in plenty. You know, um, Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who neglects discipline. But he who regards reproof will be honored. So, Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but someone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. It says in Proverbs 14.23, in all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. So those are those who I think are maybe a little fearful, a little insecure. They have plans, but they and don't involve yeah, it. Yeah, we can just talk and talk and say, tomorrow I'm going to follow up, yeah? Yeah. And for tomorrow you're on the block, man. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know? So tomorrow we're not now um, applying for it for that um, subject. And you're saying that five years now. It, yeah, also, yeah. it also speaks about greed. Proverbs 21, 17. Proverbs stuff a lot of over. Um, he who loves pleasure will become a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not become rich. Proverbs 6, 26, for an account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread. An adulteress hunts for the precious life. So once you are you are seeking after lustfulness and these things, and one of the things you know that um, came to mind after that is actually a form of sin, of commission, that limits you is addiction. Yes. Yeah. Alcohol, drugs, yes. uh, they take your money. Gambling. Ga oh, gambling, yes. Gambling takes your money. Um, playing game, watching TV, that's thoughtfulness. They take up your time where you can yeah. be productive. 
you know so um addictions is also another sinner condition that can also cause limitation the bible speaks about if you are not spending wisely that's proverbs 22 26 proverbs 22 26 which is the 27 do not be amongst those who give pleasures amongst those who become guarantors for debt if you have nothing which to pay why would he take your bed from under you so in other words do not be amongst those who give pledges if you have nothing in which to pay yeah. so or in a loan you're taking everything on your approaches you ain't walking away <laughs> and then when they come and all you become is just a guarantor for them you're just in debt just debt you know and hoarding Proverbs 11, 24. There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what is justly due. So when you're supposed to give what you withhold, it says, and yet it results only in want. So, and there is one who withholds what is justly due. And yet it results only in want. So those are those who, at the end of what they have, and they think, well, you know, sometimes you literally have to be a seed and instead of planting that seed you hold on to it in your hand and then it's only result it just won't you know so so that's some of the scriptures that deals with poverty and the reasons for it and, and um lack of limitation um how 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 can someone skillfully recognize that they are being limited? How can that be done? What what are the observation one can make in order to recognize when they are being limited? There are many tools you can use and Anytime there's a common trend of setbacks and failures, this is a key point that one is limited. Another point is when it is you are seeing common mistakes that was not caused by your error, you are seeing downfalls and um, losses. An example, you may have 25 years plus driving experience. You may have done defensive driving and all these things. But yet it seems as though your car is always hit. And oh, you know wow. for sure it is not something that is your mistake. So anytime Sorry. there are common things that is taking place negatively to you, that is not an act of you. So you will speak with many persons and they will say, well, the guy took up himself and gone. And one of the things will be like, was it your fault? And she'll say no. And this will be her report for the 10th and 15th person in her life. It was never her fault. So this is how one can recognize if they are limited. And also the most important thing that you can use, which is a tool, is the tool of dreams. And oh, wow. dreams are your spiritual monitor. It tells you of things that is taking place spiritually. It is one of the tools that we use as ministers to determine spiritually the condition of someone's life. Yes. And if it is you are dreaming of doors closing before you, oh, before wow. you enter, yeah. that's a sign. Yeah. You can also be experiencing dream of difficulty going up a hill or yeah. up a mountain. Oh, yes. You, yes. Can, yes. 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 you can experience being in traffic jams. You can experience constant breaking down of your vehicle. Or dreaming you're at your own home. Or dreaming you're at your own home, like your own primary yeah. school. Yeah, your own home, yeah. All these things represent limitation. Dreaming of being handcuffed or chained. Oh, wow. Yes, All these yes, are yes. areas. So your dreams can tell you as well if it is your, you see yourself doing exams, but you are always failing at it. It tells that you are limited. Right, always seeing yourself reaching to a point where of breakthrough, but something comes and devours in the dream. Yeah. All these are indicators. Um, I I would just add one more because I thought that was just brilliant. Um, 
So he had mentioned that you're working diligently but not getting the results or the yeah. outcome that you expect. I think also a lack of motivation. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you you know that you're destined for more but there's just this thing in you where you don't feel driven to go get it and you feel this conduct, you feel heavy, you feel, um, I think that too, that lack of motivation is a sign yes. too of limitation because that will prevent you from pursuing. Yes. Um, as he was describing his dreams, I'm wondering to myself if persons may ask this question. What about witchcraft? Could somebody be limited by witchcraft? Yes, yes. Yes, they can. Because that, that's under the generational, um, the general category of Satan's um, um, intention to steal, kill, destroy. If you have the means of witchcraft to set you back, limit you, to have to cure sickness and infirmities, or fear, torment, and these things, and it's to bring that form of limitation. Um, one, one, one of the addition, if I, I may, I, I want to stress on is the anger of generational curses. That's one of the areas we can look at. Look on mommy's side, daddy's side, and you look for patterns. Yes. Right? Um, we, we tend to grow into certain customs in families that we accept things and these things that we accept is really and truly failures because oh, yes. we tend to say um, nobody in the house is none of doctors you understand and we, we cut out for them kind of thing but who say you cannot be a doctor right um, my, my, my father Wolf garden only light. My mother wolf garden. My, my brother had this big plantation day. And my sister had this big two acres of land day. Who say you cannot be an engineer or a pilot? You understand? Who say you cannot go beyond? Nothing wrong with gardening and digging. You understand? But finding your destiny on where God called you to. If you follow the pattern of your generation before you, you can be short um, living your destiny through the limitation of generational curses and issues and practices. Um, Dr. Rachel would have mentioned just a while ago of witchcraft. And this is one of the areas that we would have been covering in some of our series that we would have gone into um, in the past and this is one of the areas that someone can really be limited and set back in. When one, and tying in with what Melissa Keon would have said in part one of this, if one go into witchcraft and trust and just by dependency upon witchcraft, that's a limitation of a relationship with God. Yes. You are limiting yourself because you are looking to another source. Yes. And that's limitation. Yes. Any obia man, any witch, any soothsayer, they don't have a relationship with God. They are being limited. That's right. They are being set back. And they are being used as a force to set back for that person. They are, they are moving like Balak and Balaam. Yeah. Balak hired Balaam, the community of Yaman, to curse Israel. <laughs> Say, them people there, I want them curse, limit them, set them back. Oh, I yes, don't want to do yes. this one again. Don't let them come here at all. Just curse them. I don't want them in my place. And when God opened his eyes, say, boy, these people bless, can't bless, they can't curse them. I not curse them at all. Balaam end up counseling Balak and saying, here what's going on. If they're blessed, go 
I'm calling that destiny and God did they come out of Egypt and go into the land I promise you. God set a boundary and destination and they were heading there. But Balak was counseled by Balaam and saying, here what's going on. In order for them to be cursed, you had to get them to do wrong. Yes. Get them to serve your gods, get them to fornicate and intermarry with people and, and that is how you hope to get an open door. Mm -hmm. And then, that is how Israel received these curses upon their life. And you see, God made reference to that in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Understand? So, in, when, when people give you evil counsel through witchcraft and these things, they are actually causing limitations upon your life. They yeah. go to them for help, they give you bathe with this, bathe with that. Do this, and then after this, and then mock, mock, or to this, mock, or to that. They're setting you back more. Yeah, they're not stumbling block before you. Exactly. Yeah. They put, just as it said, yeah. a stumbling block before you. Yeah. Limiting you. Right. Uh, there are persons who are under the impression that not that they themselves are participating in witchcraft, but witchcraft is being done to them. Mm -hmm. And that draws right back to what you say about Balaam and Balaam because. Balaam had to tell Balaam that the only way to get the curses to work mm -hmm. is that they have to cause them to the sin violation. and violate the, the, yes. the, the commandments given yes. to God. And persons don't realize that if someone is doing witchcraft on them and the witchcraft is working, yes. the only reason why the witchcraft would work is because yes. there's an open door yes. in their life that gives the enemy access yes. to work against them. Yes. So even though your neighbor, yes, might be doing witchcraft or maybe looking for your demise, it's not supposed to work. Yes. Just like when Job go up, that had your protection yes. that was yes. around Job. That protection steals us from the enemy's attacks. Yes. Only if God removes the hedge, which most of the time is, is not a very common thing or that God is doing something for growth or whatever, most of the times, is we will breach and cause the hedge to be broken and therefore the, the person's witchcraft works and that's why we're limited. They can break a hedge and still find will bite. Will bite. You ever walk into the city or walk in on some pavement on concern and walk in that post? That's ever happened to you? If you walk into that door or something like that? That, that never happened to you? All? On concern, you walk into something and you bump into something and you're like... A person maybe, a, but not a... Yeah, well, something or somebody that you're just on concern in... Well, this, we this thing, it, okay. this thing happen, don't be shame or don't be shame. This happen to me already, or you walk it, walk in, and you step off a pavement, kind of... Yes, yes, you know, that's the yeah. step on that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Now, basically... Most of the times, these things happen on persons that are not paying attention, right? You're, you're running that post or you're running to someone, you might say, sorry, excuse, or you're running to your and you put up your head because you won't focus. And there are persons, most of the time, most of the time, if we would recognize it as the Lebrance ministers, persons come to us because they run into a wall. Oh, yeah. They're running to a dead end. They are experiencing limitation in some area of their life. That is why they come to us and say, Hey, DRM, this is what I'm going through. And I'm getting a break here. Okay. Whether your marriage, your health, your personal life, they're saying, experiencing in a natural life what they're saying yes, yes. because the enemy is standing before them yes. right and um Bilam, Bilam was getting limited from God and God was trying to stop him back and say boy cool is that now where are you going you, you taking that bit like what are you taking money for mm -hmm. and, I was saying, and God trying to stop and the donkey and I said boy <laughs> don't you you see that you blind or you see that you see that you just have a donkey at the top yeah, and say, hey, I am a faithful servant all these years. You tell me about you can see the angels standing there. You understand? So, sometimes persons' eyes are not open to oh, see yes. Yes. what is in the way. Yeah. But they are experiencing and their, their effort is like, 
They were making an effort and somehow that thing was on, it was going away. And they're beaten, beaten, beaten. Only until God allowed that thing to speak to you to show you hey, your intentions wrong, your motives wrong. It's a good example. Your motive wrong. You think where you're going and do where you're heading is wrong. So that's why we bump into a wall. Most of the times, our motives are wrong. We think that we're doing is wrong. And anytime you're seeking um, intimate relationship with God and um, that way forward, God, God does always make a way to come to Him. The enemy will try. Right? But once you cry out, you God promise to make a way. So, with an honest heart, in the right channel, right avenue, right pipeline, everything, God does make a way. God does move things to you. Oh, yes. Understand? Yes. Is that once your heart right in pursuing God, and God says, seek me and find me, or, or search after me, you expect God moving things. Once you come in and nothing standing in your way, no, that devil will come, you'll give up position, but God batting away that for you, you know. Right. Understand? It's like, it's like, um, so, sorry for my example, but it's like looking to eat at a mango and a fly. You know? That is how God, God looking for pleasure, but fly keep coming, he will bat it away. Understand? Because that's how we see, we see your day. Someone coming in the way of someone that has a heart for me. I, 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 didn't brutal with that, you understand? So, guys, I part you, I don't need to pass me. Amen. So, any closing words, closing remarks? Um, just be, um, be very mindful about the things we do that can create, give the enemy access to your life. But recognize that the access, the access is not that he wants to stop, it's to just use it to frustrate Amen. you, to take you away from the kingdom of God. Yeah. Based on the information so far, and in offer part two, by now you all can recognize some stuff, mm -hmm. and it is wise to do some shutting down. Shut down some notes. That way, you will be prepared for what it is you will receive in part three. Amen. So, see you in part three. God bless you. Thanks for joining us and we are inspired. The talk show is just for you. Informing nations, supporting people in real, effective deliverance. Inspired.